two expressions that come out of the blacksmith shop that everybody's familiar with. One is strike while the iron's hot, because it doesn't stay hot very long. And the other is having too many irons in the fire. You just can't handle it fast enough. <laughs> Yeah, it takes a little time to heat heat this stuff up. I'm Wallace Yater Jr. <laughs> okay, and we're standing in the middle of a blacksmith shop outside of Boonesboro, Maryland that I started building 37 years ago in 1976. Well, I was one of these kids that grew up in suburbia. You know, the parents, uh, keep telling you you can't make a living working with your hands and it's all academic and my academic talent was pretty thin. Well what attracted me to it, it's so practical. You can do, you can do uh, more different things with hot iron than probably any other material and it's, and this is artwork, this is truck parts, uh, virtually everything we, we encounter, you know, is, is, uh, is either made by, uh, is either made directly from hot iron or made with iron that was hot at one time. Like I say, the blacksmith not only makes all his own tools, he makes everybody else's tools too. And he still does, you know, we, in, uh, in industrial blacksmithing is a is still uh, an important part of our industrial base, and uh, they, uh, uh, I mean, they do most of it with machines today. But you know, most studio blacksmith shops have power hammers, and and uh, there's uh, not that you know there's an overlap between the artist blacksmith and the industrial blacksmith and the principles of working the metal is the same. It sort of petered out a little bit and then it, it comes back, it comes and goes, but as, as long as there's any people around there'll be people doing blacksmithing because it's just too useful. You can do too many things with it. This is a swedge block. I mean, they, there's a whole bunch of different, I mean, variety. I mean, they come in an infinite variety of sizes and shapes. And, but what, they, what they're for is you get it hot, and when you pound it down in here, you get this shape, this uh, curved shape or a V shape. You, you get a, a V shape, or you can make a ladle in one of these depressions here, in these spoon shapes and, and they, this is a common, most of the common shapes that people are most likely to use and they're specialized. And now when you made that, people went nuts, right? Well, when I made it, there wasn't anybody else making them. See, it's a, it's a sort of a matter of getting it on the ground floor. A lot of people, you know, they want to try it out a little bit and they discover, well, you know, it's, it's not for them and, you know, and then others really take to it. And so you can't really say that there's 3,000 or, or uh, 500 because they're all different. They're all doing different things. Some of the early ones I did, right at the base of the eyes, I was getting cracking. It was because I was correcting it a little too cold and I was kept doing it and it was up on me. Uh, some uh, maintain an interest in the craft lifelong and then others, you know, they they'll do it a short while and move on to something else. And and uh, part of our the idea behind our guild is we want to get as many people to ex experiment and get exposed to it as possible and and, and we know that a certain number will eventually take off with it. And I 
I guess the best satisfaction I get is to see good results from coming from the effort.